The Prime Minister Scott Morrison is speaking at that ceremony in Darwin right now, so let's listen in. And what ultimately matters in that task is a people with a fierce and protective love of their nation and of their liberty, a love of home, family, community and country, a willingness to live for all of these things that are necessary and far greater than ourselves. This morning, far away from here, the people of Ukraine are doing exactly that. And on this particular day, as we honour those who fought for our liberty and freedom, we stand with the people of Ukraine who do the same thing at this very moment. In the Hall of Memory at the Australian War Memorial, there are stained glass depictions of Australians in uniform. There's an infantryman, infantryman a sailor, an aviator, a nurse, a signaller, engineer, gunner and a wounded soldier. And below each is a word, one word that is the foundation of all, devotion. Devotion to Australia and to our values that has compelled women and men in all the places and in all the battles where our history has been written. From the muddy trenches of Europe to the dust of North Africa and the vast water of the Pacific, the freezing snows of Korea, the stifling jungles of Vietnam and the suffocating heat and dust of the Middle East. And here in Darwin, when the Australian mainland was attacked repeatedly again and again 80 years ago, through it all, our service men and women have defended our land and our values devotedly. It is often said on Anzac Day that we gather to remember the fallen, the nearly 103,000 men and women whose names adorn our sacred role of honour, and the hundreds of thousands more who have worn our uniform and possibly their loved ones only truly know them best. But we also gather to remember that cord that ties all Australians from the past to the present and ultimately to the future. To understand ourselves and our precious democratic inheritance. In the words of Sister Vivian Bullwinkle, we must never forget that the lives, opportunities, sports and freedom of our young were the ones that, that were bought at a price. To forget the past is, of course, to repeat it. It was Clive James who said on Anzac Day a long time ago, the late Clive James, the memory of past sacrifice fades, he said, precisely because we have got the world our parents dreamed of, and I would say fought for. But our world is changing. War does strike Europe again. Coercion troubles our region once more. An arc of autocracy is challenging the rules-based order our grandparents had secured and democratic free peoples are standing together again. In facing this world, we must remember again, if only then, it is only then that we truly appreciate what these times require of us all. This Andac day, I think of two young Australians. The first, Sidney Kinsman, enlisted in the early days of the Second World War. He had just turned 19. His dad wanted him to enlist, didn't want him to enlist. But Sydney's determination prevailed and he joined the 2nd 48th Battalion. He was among the first in Tobruk defending against the Nazi march on Egypt. There were months of scorching days, bitter nights and frayed nerves from the constant threat of enemy fire. Later he'd fight in the Battle of El Alamein before being taken as a prisoner of war, eventually escaping, hiking under the cover of darkness with a Kiwi mate and a Victorian mate to cross the Alps and Italy to Switzerland. That teenager who joined up eight decades ago now is a centenarian who lives in Alice Springs, and I caught up with him yesterday. Sydney says, Anzac Day is, is a day you remember so much. Today we also pause to remember another Australian who served. He too faced resistance enlisting. His name was Frederick Prentice. He spent the early years at Powell Creek Telegraph Station, about 800 kilometres south of here. When war commenced in 1915, he wanted to join up, but wasn't allowed because he was Aboriginal. The Defence Act prohibited men not of substantial European origin from joining, it said at the time. But he enlisted anyway, and as a soldier, he faced the worst of war, 
Four years of active service, he experienced the carnage of the Western Front. On two occasions, he was the only survivor of a six-man machine gun team ripped apart by enemy fire. In 1916, Private Prentice was awarded the Military Medal for his actions at Munke Farm Posiers. The citation read, he showed great courage, resource and ability in bringing machine guns and ammunition through the enemy barrage and broken ground. He served our country despite the racism and discrimination endemic of those times. It's easy to love a country that loves you, much harder if you haven't been loved in return. That shows true love for our nation, which extends to this day. After the war, he became a gold miner and eventually settled in Catherine and died alone in 1957 and was buried in an unmarked grave. Fortunately, the story of Frederick Pennis doesn't end there. Over half a century after his death, local members of the stolen generations petitioned for him to receive a headstone and a soldier's funeral. And last year, on Remembrance Day, Lance Corporal Frederick Pennis received the honour he so richly deserved. 106 years had passed since he joined up, but Australia remembered. And Australia has changed also since that time when he enlisted. We are becoming the country he might have dreamed of. A country both fair and free. It's our 19th Prime Minister, Sir John Gordon, also a veteran, an aviator who had been shot out of the sky. He described Anzac Day as a day when we look back and we look forward. He also said that if our fallen could speak to us, they would say this. We bought your freedom with our lives. So take this freedom. Guard it as we have guarded it. Use it as we can no longer use it. And with it as a foundation, build. Build a world in which meanness and poverty, tyranny and hate have no existence. Do not fail them, he said. And on this sacred day, the citizens of our country who face the challenges of our time, of our generation, pledge solemnly together that we will not, lest we forget.